What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? Bitch, y'all already know what it is, okay? Um, This time, yeah, it's a little bit of something going on. It's not too loud, but it would have picked up on the camera, so I ain't want to risk it. But anyway, you know, my neighbors finally acting like they got some goddamn sense, okay? Like, yeah, you do got other neighbors in the neighborhood that probably don't want to hear all that shit. But anyway, let's just get up into this episode. Now, let me just tell y'all this right off rip. I'm not all the way there because i'm a little high so just whatever happens happen okay anyway it's a good day it was a beautiful day let's get into it love and marriage huntsville season four episode six let me just say this did y'all see the little preview for what happened that's gonna be coming up for the rest of the season i said wait a minute we halfway done with the season already because y'all already giving us a mid-season trailer okay like it's only gonna be 12 episodes because y'all know love and marriage huntsville good to give us at least 20 okay but um baby baby they just basically told us that this first half it was just the precursor to the bullshit that's really about to come, okay? It was warming us up because the the drama that's been going on so far right now has been very much redundant. We still talking, you know, we spent three episodes talking about that damn picture and we spending three more episodes talking about this goddamn, well, let me say four fucking episodes talking about this damn uh, pajama party and, and Destiny and Mel. Girl, don't nobody give a shit, okay? Let's get to the stuff that we ain't really been talking about that's been floating out there, okay? Um, and once again, shout out to Scotty by Nature, you know, TV on here because he's been reporting a whole bunch of stuff that's been going on behind the scenes, behind the scenes. Okay, like uh, social media stuff. Listen, take Miss Wanda's phone. Okay, disable all of her apps because I'm so tired of her getting on live or whatever and, um, you know, trying to defend Tisha and going at the mail and all this stuff. At the end of the day, your daughter is grown. At the end of the day, Melanie is grown. And if she feels as though Tisha is her enemy, she don't want to talk to her, she ain't got nothing to say, blah, blah, blah. That's her feelings, and she is entitled to it, just like your daughter is entitled to it herself as well. And I'm pretty sure your daughter can fight her own goddamn battles and don't need you to come to the front every damn time, okay? Because you you be making the situation a little bit worse than what it is, Miss Wanda. I just want you to know that. But moving on from that, let's get into the episode. So speaking of Mel, you know, she meets up at a little shop or whatever, taco place you know probably was taco tuesday you know we so damn typical and stereotypical but um anyway i was like wait a minute bitch <laughs> I, I ain't never looked at me like that okay i ain't never looked at me like that i said hold up bitch that black ensemble that you got on, that shit look good as fuck. I said, bitch, Mel was looking real nice. And then here come Kimmy. I said, Kimmy with the bob, bitch. Come on. That was cute. Everybody was cute. I was like, you know what? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving on. Stormy shows up. I was like, oh. <laughs> I I was like, oh, like, I'm trying with Stormy. I really am. I'm trying with her. You know what I'm saying? I'm um, trying to give everybody a fair shake, you know. But something about her just really annoys me. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's because her face look a little bit crooked or it's always look like she frowning. You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But, um... You know, Kimmy came there first, and she was talking to Mel about her, uh, you know, of course, she got to talk about the vacation, the honeymoon. It was so great. It was so lovely. All this stuff. Woo, woo, woo. Then they get into the whole situation, because when Stormy get there, they get into that whole situation. What happened with the PJ party, okay? I said, damn, bitch, Christmas is over. We at Easter. We still talking about this goddamn pajama party? But, but, um... She was like, everything was good because Kimmy asked Tiff, uh, not Tiffany, but Mel, how she felt about the party. Did it go good to you or whatever? She said, I felt everything went well. You know, everything was good up until I saw whatever was going on between you, you and um, Tiffany. And she was like, what you talking about? Me and Tiffany was having a decent conversation. We was clearing the air and everything was cool. You know, I said it was just Stormy that came in interjecting, doing all that stuff. So Stormy had to say, you know, we met up, you know, we put things to bed you know what i'm saying and stormy feel like she wants to give her a second chance or whatever maybe she was doing a little bit much and being too hard on and all that shit because you know 
um, first impressions are everything. But I'm just like, girl, you just don't like that girl just because. And I, I honestly don't know why. But all right, if you say you're going to be cool, we're going to see how that is. But Kimmy also wanted to understand, well, if Destiny wasn't at the party and then Tisha wasn't at the party, that was one thing. How the hell did Kiki get invited to the party? And then why y'all up there talking about Tisha and she ain't even there? You know, and she was like, basically, Kiki and Mel have a mutual friend, okay? And I believe that the mutual friends is best friends with Kiki. And they've been knowing each other, whatever, for like 14 years or so, something like that. And so that's how she came across knowing Kiki. She So she's confirming that she's known Kiki longer than she's long, known Tisha. You know what I'm saying? Do you see how a lot of these situations are kind of redundant of each other? Mel has an issue with Destiny being cool with Martel, but Chad Martel has known Destiny. Well, Destiny has known Martel way longer than she's known. Uh, 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 what's her name? Melody. Tisha has an issue with Kiki being cool with Mel, but Kiki has known Mel way longer than she's known Tisha. A lot of this stuff is just overlapping. And we're just like seeing like the contradiction and reactions to all of them. I'm, I'm, I hope y'all peeping that. Okay. But, um, she was like, you know, me and Kiki, we been friends. She comes over. You know, or we, we talk about things on the phone all the time. We don't bring up Keisha, uh, Tisha, whatever. That's not what we do. You know, and if uh, Tisha do come up the few times that she does, I said, well, hold on. Now, you said y'all don't talk about, I, I don't care to talk about her cousin or whatever, and I'm not cool with her just because of her cousin and all that shit. But, you know, if there's been some few conversations where Tisha do come up, like, we get together and we talk and how we can relate about the things that's happening and what they're going. I'm like, but you that, that means you're talking about it. <laughs> y'all discussing it. But, I mean, I guess there's a difference in male and them world. So, hey, no matter if you're trying to relate to the situation, to what's going on, or, or whatever, you're still talking and bringing a girl up somehow, some way. You know what I'm saying? But uh, moving on from that, Kimmy still just don't understand what's going on with that relationship. Because at the end of the day, you know, she was like, you say K Kiki your friend, and y'all been friends for all these years, but I ain't never seen, as long as I've known Kimmy, uh, Kimmy, like, as long, long as she's known Mel, she ain't never seen Kiki at none of your events. So, like, what's really good, you know? And then she talk about um, the whole meetup with Destiny and how that thing just went awry. And basically, it's over in Mel's eyes. We ain't even got to get deep into it because we saw what happened. Mel is not going to agree with the fact that, you know, she plays some parts in some things. Destiny plays some parts in some things. And I honestly feel as though what Martell said later on in the episode when Destiny went over there to his place that, you know, they never really was friends like that. That's what I feel like. And I feel like he was telling the truth. He was inferring and trying to, he possibly assuming that that's what the case was. But I believe that's facts, that they never really was friends the way that Destiny is trying to make it seem and the way that Mel is trying to make it seem. You know, not deep, deep friends, you know, to be doing all this shit over. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, stuff happens. And um, uh, Stormy had asked, do you see things becoming cool again with y'all? And um, she was like, no. She said that real quick. At this point, she's like, um... <clears throat> If you're going to talk shit about me, you, you you intentionally throwing out negative stuff and you're not trying to counteract it, counteract it and, you know, uh, uh, do it in public. You're doing all this shit in public. So, therefore, you're going to face everything else in public. Like, you know, you putting it out there, I'm going to put it out there, too. Listen, at the end of the day, I don't see if a male and Destiny ever being cool again. Um, like I said, I don't feel like they was really cool in the beginning. I agree with Martell on that part and with all the stuff that I heard recently about what was coming out, you know, um, some, the lady allegedly who about last week's episode when Destiny was talking about some male had the lady not, uh, uh, work with her to do the project. And so she backed out. She said, girl, that ain't never happened. I ain't never tell her nothing like that. Mel ain't never tell me nothing. And Mel had the girl on the phone. The girl could be saying the truth, you know, or she could be lying just to save face or let Melody sell, save face. But I'm, feeling like the lady is telling the truth because you know i don't i don't listen destiny destiny you opened yourself up to a whole bunch of shit all right by not you being on this show 
and then coming on last season and we barely got anything out of you. You had no real storyline of your own. You was in everybody else's drama. The main thing that was with you was your issue between Tiffany and you, and that was it, and then that squash probably before the half of the season went off. You know what I'm saying? But you didn't come on with a storyline to talk about the fact that you was going through what you was going through in your relationship, um, um, the fact that you say that you was on public assistance, the fact that, you know, you was getting a divorce and all this stuff was happening and you were struggling, the ins and outs of what was going on with your business. That could have been, that could have been way more interesting than what's going on right now. And it would have felt probably more real to us. Okay. Because right about now, a lot of us is looking at you like, girl, what exactly are you hiding? Because we just don't feel like you being 100% truthful. Granted, it's not, our, it's not our business, but you on a reality show. And everybody else is putting their life out there, but you not necessarily doing it. Okay? You know, and people coming out saying that you're lying about certain things. And I'm like, oh, that's crazy. You know, it, it, it's, it's a lot. Kimmy had asked me, you know what? Well, I don't know how this going to be for the relationship of the, uh, the whole crew. Like... You know, everybody don't fuck with everybody at this point. And I'm trying to have a housewarming party for Jalen. And, and, and you going to come? She was like, who all going to be there? Bitch, that would have been my answer right there. That would have took that and said, no, you ain't coming. No, 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 seriously, who all going to be there? She said, so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. And, of course, Tisha and Marceau, they're going to be there because, you know, they're family. And I just wanted to let you know because, you know, you don't fuck with Tisha. You don't fuck with uh, Destiny. You don't fuck with this person or whatever. But I won't be inviting Martel because I'm just sick of his shit in the way that it's starting to affect me and mine. And I'm just over it. Well, Mel had the nerve to say, she said, well, how come you went over his mess last year when he was going through all the shit that I was going through with him? You know, it was, Martell has a good heart. Martell has a good heart. She said, yeah, I said all that shit. But I also called him out on his shit as well. And said what he was doing was fucked up. And I was like, yeah, she being truthful. She being truthful. I see where Mel coming from. But see, Mel has this issue where she want everybody to just basically say, fuck Martell. She won't say that. But that's what she wants. She wants them to all just say, I don't want to have no dealings with them and with him. And truthfully, to be honest... I don't see how any of them are really friends with that man like that. Because you wouldn't be in no communication with me with all the stuff that you didn't pull. You know, no matter what her reasoning is, uh, male reasoning is for them not to be mad, uh, to be mad with them or whatever. But all the shit he didn't pull, hell no. Nah, I wouldn't want to be friends with Martell. I wouldn't ever be able to trust that man. You know what I'm saying? And um, Tish, uh, Kimmy was just like, you know, the shit is just starting to affect my family. Okay? And I just ain't got time for it. You know, he, she ain't never had no issue with him. Like, he ain't never did nothing with them or whatever but i guess it's because of that picture and all of that shit you know marceau and all that it's just it's just a mess and she was like here go mel now she gets to feel exactly how i felt when i was going through it alone with him i said what that melody <laughs> stop it <laughs> you just oh <laughs> Girl, you're just gonna be so dramatic. It was, it was funny, but she ain't lying. She ain't lying. I, I did feel bad for Mel going through all that shit back then, but you know it is what it is. Um, moving on from that, Destiny go see Martell. Destiny go see Martell. She had to let us know. You know, I had to go over there and pop up on Martell, my long time friend. I said, oh. We already know, bitch. You ain't had to put that emphasis on that. That was for Mel. Oh, okay. That one for us. That was for Mel. You know, you were trying to throw a little shot. Okay, I get it. I get it. You know, talking about, um, she, she said she wanted to go over there to get some insight on Mel because he's been with her for a minute and probably seen her go through some of this shit before and how to deal with it. What do you need insight for, Destiny, at this point? Is it is becoming a little fake. It's 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 be appearing a lot of fake. Because if somebody tells me in so many words plus the actual words that they are through with me, that we are done, we're not friends no more, say la be bitch, bon voyage, okay? We're not talking. I don't want you in my life. Please go away, block and delete me. I don't need you to go over there to my ex. I don't need you to go over there to our mutual friends or whatever to try to see how to get back and how to control the situation. Uh, bitch, ain't nothing to control. Just shut up talking to me. 
and I ain't going to talk to you. Okay? Don't say nothing else. That's all you got to do. That's how you control the situation. That's the insight into the situation. I'm sitting here like, what is this thing? Well, why would you go to Martel? Martel don't give a fuck about her right now like that. So, of course, he not going to give you no honest advice that's going to be like, you know, well, just give her time. Even though he did say, I hope that y'all be able to mend. But everything that he was saying was negative about her. They're coming fresh off of a goddamn divorce and years of going back and forth with her feelings and all this shit. And you're going to go over there and ask him trying to get some insight on her. I said, now, Destiny, stop it. Okay, now stop it. You know, she talked about the coffee date, um, how Mel acted or what was said, and, you know, how Mel felt about uh, uh, Destiny still being cool with Martell. Martell got upset and said, see, this is what Mel is trying to do. She's trying to turn everybody against me. On the one hand, yes, it do comes off like Mel is trying to do that a little bit. But on the other hand, a lot of the shit that you've done yourself, Martell, has turned people against you. It ain't really had nothing to do with uh, Mel. It's your own actions. But yeah, I do kind of feel like she could possibly feel that way. But, um, you know, it, it, it's very much childish, like they said, very much high school. You cannot tell somebody who they can and cannot be friends with. And if you don't want to fuck with me because I'm friends with somebody that you don't like, then you were never my friend to begin with, okay? Because I'm not no lacking ass bitch. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no father the leader ass bitch. I'm the fucking leader. The fuck I'm talking about? Anyway, I said, Mel, grow up. Martell, you grow up too. And Destiny, you stop fucking playing, all right? I'm looking at this whole scene like, really, <laughs> really, girl? Um, but anyway, you know, um, Destiny said she used to stand up for Martell, um, you know, especially when they was stand up to him, when the shit that was going on and, and she was being a friend to Mel by doing that, calling him out, which she did. And he said, well, you shouldn't have did that. You shouldn't have came on me, uh, came down on me so hard the way that you did. Uh, no. Yes, you did. Yes, yes, she should have. But he also said that he understood that she was trying to be a good friend to her as well. See, he understand. How is it that Mel don't get it, <laughs> but he understands the reason why she would want to still be friends with Mel, but yeah, you don't understand the reason why she's still friends with Marty. I said, girl, it just don't make sense. It just don't make sense. I said, are these kids or are these adults? Which one are they? Okay, because I'm not understanding why people can't get these concepts together. You know, y'all contradicting each other. You know what I'm saying? But hey, moving on from that. Um, she was like, yes, I was trying to be on her side, especially for the simple fact that we both women going through divorce. You know what I'm saying? She was once a part of my village and, you know, she was once the person that I can go talk to all the time and lean on. And obviously right now I can't do that. And I'm sitting here like, well, you going and talking to everybody about it on camera is not going to make the situation any better. Okay. It's like, Girl, let that go. Uh, once you show me how you are, that's all I need to know. I can never be friends with you again because in my back of my mind, I be thinking like, damn, what if this happens again? What if I make a slight misstep and you just blow it all up on me? You know what I'm saying? So why are you fighting so hard to be with somebody that don't want to be in your life? Okay. You know what I'm saying? That, that male don't want you to be friends with you. She only want to try. Let it go. Um... Like I said, Martell did say, Martell said, bitch, I just hope that she has a better heart. She gets a better heart because I know, you know, we go through our ups and downs, but you shouldn't be treating people like that. You know, hurting people just because you hurt. I said, Martell, you got all of the fucking nerves. Okay. Oh, now see, that would have been nice coming from somebody else other than him. Other than him. Baby, my face is greasy. I got to go wash it. But anyway, I was like, Martell, stop it. Meanwhile, um, Wanda went over there to see Tisha about the whole uh, business that she got going on the food truck. She wanted to see Marceau. Marceau wasn't there. Um, you know, talking about is he going to um, put in on this whole thing, basically invest. And Tisha said... I had to talk him into it. You know, he felt some type of way about some of the things that you was bringing up with them rumors and stuff. But, of course, whatever I can, I can sway him and push him into whatever direction I need him to go. I said, since the fuck when, Tisha? <laughs> Is there something going on that we don't know? Like, 
when this be happening, Tisha? But all right, you know, Miss Wanda got her business license. I said, go ahead, Miss Wanda. You better do that. Okay, you're being real serious about this. And I do like the fact that, you know, Tisha did say, um, you know, you can come to the uh, restaurant and shadow a cook because that's what she should do. And then I'll help you with the financials and everything like that. That's what you do. You look out for your folks when they come through shit like that, you know, trying to get them off their feet and start their shit. You know what I'm saying? But then... Um, Tisha starts to bring up the whole situation about what happened. I'm I'm looking at my nose. I'm sorry. What happened at uh this whole conversation that she had with Kiki about how Kimmy told her, baby, when she said Kimmy told me at the PJ party, did y'all see the way that Wanda face turned the fuck up when she said Kimmy's name like? And she was like, no, nah, no, nah, mama. She told me about the fact that Kiki was at Mel's house at a party that I was not invited to. But yeah, my cousin was invited to. And yeah, she was over there doing a whole bunch of talking about me. She was like, Kiki? My little niece, Kiki? I said, yes, Miss Wanda. The one and only, Kiki. Okay. Um, She was like, why is she over there? <clears throat> and... You know, Wanda just felt like what she doing is very snakish, okay? You over there with people that don't like your cousin. You're talking about her, uh, uh, putting her information out there with this person or whatever. And, you know, they basically said that she being a snake and it's most likely that she jealous of her. I said, oh, Lord, I knew that jealousy shit was going to come up. I just knew it. Miss Wanda was up in that uh, confessional and was like, she image. She image of their relationship. She image of their uh, marriage. She image of the life that Tisha got. Okay, I said image, baby. If I had not had the subtitles up on my on my TV, I wouldn't have known that she was trying to say envious. I said image, girl. Okay, Miss Wanda. I said, wow, that's crazy. That's what we're going to all chalk this up to, that uh, Kiki is jealous. I don't like that, even though sometimes that stuff do goes on, but I don't like that. And, of course, you know, this starts to make her look at Kiki differently and look at Kimmy differently. Like, she used to call Kimmy the snake, okay? She used to call her snake or whatever, and she was like, I don't look at her like a snake no more. Uh, Kiki is the snake at this point. You know, you going over there, you talking, um about family stuff, whatever, and if you was cool, why is it that Kimmy had to come over there and tell you what was going on, and how come Kiki couldn't tell you that, hey, I went over there to Mel's place uh, for a party just in case you want to, you know, you probably might hear some stuff or whatever, but that's just what happened. Nothing really went on or whatever, and, and honestly, Kiki ain't have to do that, but given that she know how her family is, she could have. But again, she didn't have to do that. But, you know, at the end of the day, do I feel like Kiki was wrong in some aspects? Yes. Kiki was not wrong for going to the party. Kiki was wrong for engaging in conversation about Tisha. Okay? Whether it was a lot, whether it was small, whether it was big, she should have shut it down. Or she should have walked away and said, uh-uh, I ain't finna do that. That's my cousin regardless. Okay? That's my cousin. But, of course, Miss Wanda wants to have a talk with Kiki. Um, Mel, she go over there to see Tiffany at her work. You know, um, talking about her skincare line, you know, taking care of the kids, helping them transition through all of this whole thing with this uh, divorce and everything. Um, getting to the fact that Tiffany probably want to have some more kids, but how they going to balance it with her, you know, uh, doing all this work. They're trying to, it's going to be difficult balancing with trying to build a business and then having a newborn and, you know, she... Uh, a nur nurturer, okay? She was like, my son go see his daddy. Louis' son go see his mama. The house be empty. And it's just like, oh my God, I'm just such a nurturer. And I just I just want to have a baby. I just want this. But how mama balance it? Girl, Mel said, listen, when them kids was kids and they was babies, I took them to the office every damn day, had a playpen up in there, and I still pushed on. I said, you know, you got to make do with what you got to make do with. But Tiffany said she wants it to be in a way where she wants to present it in a way and it's they, them to come out, come to their decision in a way that Lewis does not feel like he's being pressured to do it and it's something that he wants to do as well as her. You know, so I get that. Meanwhile, you know, uh, she starts talking about her family 
Um, she's going to see her, try to find her biological father, going down there, taking a road trip to Utah. Uh, she had found her biological mother like a year or so ago. Um, and Mel was like, oh my God, I want to go with you. She was like, you can go. Cause you know, Mel can be a little bit aggressive. Okay. She's inquisitive. She can be a little bit aggressive and I'm probably going to need that. You know, asking all the questions that I don't, I don't be asking. Here go Mel. And you know what? Maybe it's the Scorpio in me, but I always like mystery novels and suspense and thrillers. And I just be wanting to investigate. So let me go with you so I can help to investigate who your daddy is. I said, you know what? <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> I don't know why. It was just so funny to me. But um, she going to be there. And I was like, damn, so that means you, Lewis, and... um. You know, Mel's going to be in the car. That's cool. That's cool. Meanwhile, Wanda go over there to Kiki house. She took a trip on her little rocket ship and knocked on Kiki door. Kiki said, uh-uh, where you coming from? She was like, I was in town, so uh, I decided to drop in. She was like, girl, I just moved in, so excuse the boxes. I'm still moving in. <laughs> if I would have known that you was going to be coming, I would have been a little bit more on guard. You want something to drink? Don't don't try to come for me with my uh drink up in a little plastic cup. You know, I'm still a little bit, I'm like hood rich, okay? That's how hood rich. Wanda said, you mean hood rich or hood bitch? Kiki said, <laughs> Hood rich, baby. I leave that hood bitching to you. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> Kiki already knew, bitch. She knew. Okay? She knew the mess that was about to go down as soon as Wanda opened up the door. She said, basically, I know that you already probably didn't heard what was going on. And I've been wanting to have this conversation with you for a minute. She said, well, bitch, that's why I'm here. Let's go there. Wanda just basically called her out and said... You are moving like a fucking snake. That's Wanda Ho. That's, you know, I know that's her word. You're moving like a snake. I'm looking at you like a snake because you over there with Mel. You over there talking about my daughter or whatever. And you're talking about her to messy ass women. And Kiki in that confessional said, now how the fuck she of all people going to call somebody messy when she one of the messiest bitches I know. I said, I know that's right. She is messier than messy. Okay. But what she's saying is that you don't do this. You don't backstab your cousin to other people. And she was like, well, bitch, first of all, uh, me and Tisha ain't been cool like that for a minute. We used to be besties, but we not, okay? But how come it's okay for her to go tell my personal business to people, but then it's a problem when I go, I go say her shit? She told your personal business? Yes. What she say? Some stuff that was going on with me. She went and told Mel and them or whatever. And she was like, but that's your cousin. Mel ain't... Tisha told your business to somebody that was her friend or who she thought was her friend at the time. She was like, okay, and Mel, my friend, she not your friend. She not your friend. That girl ain't your friend. You know what I'm saying? And what Wanda is trying to say is Mel most likely trying to use your ass to get at uh, uh, Tisha. Make her feel away. Even if she don't necessarily bring up Tisha's name or whatever, it's just the mere fact that Kiki is now hanging out with Mel and it's out in the open and people know. Because like Kimmy said, since when was Kiki over there at your, in your events? Because we ain't never known that. We ain't know that from season one. <laughs> like, we ain't never seen Kiki at none of these events unless they just didn't put the camera on her. So I, I, I was like, you know, why to make a point? But she a lot. Kiki, like, one thing she gonna do is defend her daughter. Tisha probably ain't gonna do it, but uh, Wanda gonna do it, you know, and basically was just calling her and saying that she fucked up for what she did. And, and she was like, well, how long ago was this personal stuff? She said, this was like four, five years ago. She said, bitch, you up here breaking this old shit. <laughs> Wanda was over when she heard four, five years ago. She said, bitch, you bringing old shit when I'm bringing new shit. That's the fucking difference, okay? We talking about the now, the now. Bitch, we ain't talking about shit that happened four, five years ago. Why we keep bringing that shit up? And I said, well, if you want to come at Kiki about that shit, do the same thing to Tisha, okay? Do the same thing to Tisha, you know what I'm saying? Because she'll bring up some shit that we thought was buried with other people, case in point, male, you know? It happens. That's what I'm talking about. Like some of these storylines, y'all doing the same damn things to each other that you don't want to be done to you. You know what I'm saying? Um, she was like, you know what? The issue came when they was younger because at one point 
Kiki and um, Tisha was real cool until they was like 13 years old. And she said, do you know uh, what it is? It's between Wanda, Tisha mama, and um, her daddy, Kiki daddy. She was like, basically, she was not allowed to come over there around the family. And um, Wanda said, you want to know why that is? She said, because Wanda family came from the projects. Kiki family actually came from an actual home. Like she said, a house home. An actual home. And she felt as though they thought that they was better than them. And I said, you know what? I can understand that and I can see that. So basically, a family rivalry that was going on amongst the brothers and sisters spread down and got put onto the kids. And so therefore, now they're always in competition because the mama and the daddy is putting them into competition. She was like, I can't stand every time, you know, uh, uh, when I turned 16 or whatever, I tried to reach out. But you know what it was? I heard... Uh, one time you and my daddy was fighting or whatever, and then you throwing out there talking about some Kiki jealous of her, and then he talked about, no, Tisha jealous of her. I can't stand that word, the jealous. And I was like, I understand that. I understood in that moment where Kiki was coming from, like, why y'all putting y'all issues that y'all got with each other on us, okay? And it's y'all fault that we're in this type of competition because that's what y'all put out there, and that's what y'all made us do. And y'all can, and we, we can see it. We can see it. But at the end of the day, <sighs> Tisha says she just, I mean, she just, want, Kiki says she tired of the bullshit. Um, and, and Wanda said, bitch, I don't fool with bitches. Okay. You going to be out here doing the shit that you doing. I don't fool with bitches. And that's that. I said, you know what? Y'all need therapy. Y'all don't need to be on TV. Y'all need goddamn therapy. That's what y'all need, bitch. Okay, all this family dysfunction and discord. Anyway, Tiffany and Lewis, girl, ended out the episode. I didn't even know this review was going to be this damn long. Um, She rented a little Airbnb for him. They could have a little date night. It was cute. I ain't going to lie. It was cute. You know, she had the chef there. She had a little saxophone there. You know, she had the real, uh, the red rose petals and the, the champagne and, you know, had the food being done. He was like, uh-uh, let me look at you, bitch. That's how I'm going to be. That's, let me tell you something. You do all some shit like that, bitch. You better come to the door looking good. And I'm going to be like, God damn. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. For me, it ain't, it, for me. Okay, okay, I see what you are. You got to compliment your woman. You got to compliment your man. Let him, let him feel good, you know, and let him know that you like him. Because sometimes y'all motherfuckers be in relationships with niggas that y'all don't like, and I don't understand that shit, okay? But um, he was like, look at this. I mean, Tiffany had the calves popping out. I'm going to give her that. I'm going to give her that. And um, if it was up, I don't know if he was just acting or whatever, but if it was up to Louis, he probably would have did her right there. Y'all want to see a movie? Here we go. Tiffany had to stop him. Take him over there to the table. He sat down. Tiffany sat down on him. Did y'all see the way the chef was looking at him like this? And then turned away. <laughs> but basically, he gets to talking about this whole situation with the kids. And oh, she wants to have kids. He's basically on the fence about it because he's like... When the kids go to they, they daddy and they mama, we got an empty ass house and I can do whatever it is that I want to do. All right. That's what it, he liked the quiet. She wants some more kids. And then it brings up issues about the whole trip thing. Um, the fact that Mel is going on a trip and she want to make it a girl's trip. So that means that Lewis is going to be out. And he was a little bit disappointed, even though he didn't really say it. She knew that he was because she called him out on his facial expression. And I would be disappointed too. And especially after hearing that her ex-husband got to see her mother and he hasn't yet. And they found the mama last year. They were married. And I'm sitting here like, so why is it that your ex-husband get to see your mom and not your husband getting to see him, uh, getting to see your mother first? That didn't make sense to me. And I don't care if the ex-husband is your baby daddy. Your baby daddy ain't got nothing to do with this right about now. It's your, your your son and your husband, the one that you live with, the people you live with. Those the ones that should have saw your uh your 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 um mama first. And now you're letting Mel go see your daddy if you find your daddy first instead of your that. You know, I just need her because you know she asked the questions that I won't ask and be a little bit aggressive and do this and do that. I said your husband couldn't do that too. 
I was like, Tiffany, wrong move. But he understanding because I would have been, I would have been pissed as shit. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, that's just all that's going on. I ain't got nothing else to talk about. Um, This is what I want to talk about, though. I forget. When she was, when Tiffany was talking about the baby issue with Mel, she said when she had her son, she bled a lot to the point that she had to have a DNC. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but DNC, ain't that what they use, like, to get when they, when women abort babies? Or is that something else? Girl, I gotta go look that up. Because I didn't know that. And she was like, it's hereditary. And the main reason why she want to go find her um daddy, because she knows some things about her biological mother, maternal side. Now she needs to know what's going on with her biological paternal side you know like what's going on in the genes and shit and see that's the stuff that i be thinking about when these kids begin adopted have y'all been thinking about that it's this netflix show finna come on next week next month about this uh sperm donor doctor who was um implanting his sperm in all these women okay uh uh, uh fertility doctor i should say that wasn't implanting the husband's sperm but implanting his sperm so he got like probably thousands of kids out there and they fanning them they fanning each other can you imagine the fact that you probably could simply, these kids could probably fuck each other, you know what I'm saying? They don't know what type of illnesses they got or what's in their bloodline. I be thinking about that when kids get adopted. How do they, you know, know what they, uh, what's in their hereditary gene bloodline or whatever. But anyway, I don't know how we got on there. That's it. That's it. Let me get, <laughs> let me get off here. I'll see y'all later. This a mess. Peace, y'all.